almost 40 and still single? There is a fix. And in this episode with Jolie, I go over the why of her finding herself in this situation, nearing 40 and still single, and what she needs to do. Three really important things that Jolie, who says she's feeling fearful and frustrated that she has not found the one. I know that she can by implementing what I tell her she needs to understand and incorporate in her life. She can have what she desires and deserves and the family she wants. If you are almost 40 and find yourself still single and you are also feeling fearful and a little frustrated, this episode is for you. But this is also for you. If you are younger and you know that you want to find your one and perhaps have a family, very important for every woman to take stock of and understand that being almost 40 is not the final act. It is simply a chapter in your life that you can rewrite and have what it is that you truly want. Take notes and start making changes by listening to this interesting and informative episode of Making Wonder. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love and given me some great guidance and direction. And now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach for women, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. I coach you to find a potential Mr. Right, get an ex back, or grow an existing relationship with a man you truly desire, and learn how to inspire his continued interest for the relationship of your dreams, so that you level up to the complete commitment you totally deserve. My guest today is 39-year-old Jolie, who was recently out of a situationship with 40-year-old James. Jolie says she is extremely frustrated and scared, as she would have liked to have been married with children by now, and is worried the time is not on her side. She's trying to do online dating and comes on Make Him Wonder to know how to find a great partner when she finds it so hard to be attracted to men who want the same thing. Jolie states she is tired of living without a partner and wants my help to get a new perspective, move forward, and create the life she knows she is meant to live. Welcome, Jolie. Thank you, Coach Paula. What inspired you to reach out to us other than what you state here, which I feel for you and glad you did, but what made you want to talk to me about it? I think I tried a lot of things um, in my 30s when I realized it wasn't so easy for me to find a partner to settle down with. I've done talk therapy for years and I've tried many different strategies of dating, and uh, I discovered your uh, work, the book, and the podcast earlier this year, and I found your perspective really fresh and very down-to-earth and practical and different than a lot of the advice out there. So I thought it would be great to speak with you directly about my situation and see if I could get some wisdom and change my perspective on things. Great. I always find it helpful to ask this question. There is typically one thing that if we changed in our life, it would influence and change all the other things to help us get what it is that we say we want. So if you could pinpoint the one thing that you think, if it changed, it would have a positive influence over your situation and change it to the way you would like it to be? Hmm, that's a great question. The thing that comes to my mind first is confidence, I guess. Self-confidence, I think that might be it. 
I love that. And you came up with that really quickly. I think that not putting too much thought and just answering right away can be very helpful for anybody who wants to ask themselves that question. So let's look into that confidence issue. When you say that, what do you think has been keeping you from having the confidence needed to change this? Hmm. That feels, (laughs) that feels complicated. I think my childhood, there's a lot in my childhood that affects my self-confidence and my confidence that I will get the outcome I want, which is a husband, like a a loving partnership and, and children. I think that my childhood has a lot to do with it. And then like experiences that I've had as an adult dating and patterns that I've noticed. Um, within myself and the men that I've historically been attracted to um, have all played a part in uh, just making my self-confidence not where it probably needs to be. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. It makes so much sense. (laughs) You're outlining the trajectory pretty much for all of us. If you had said, my previous relationships have caused me to be X, Y, and Z in and of themselves, you would be missing a big part of it. The programming you had that gives us our foundational worth, value, feeling of lovability, confidence, self-esteem, all of that with a love interest is rooted in our birth to age seven experience. And then what occurs is we play that out over and over in our adult relationships. And it takes a little bit of a different form with each partner, but it's the same theme played over and over again. So the fact that you know that it started there is a very good start to changing this for yourself. And it gives you control. The control is within. It's not the men necessarily. Yes. Now we get to the attraction part of it. And you're saying, I'm finding it hard to be attracted to men who want the same thing. Tell me more about that. In other words, you say, well, I have met five men over the last 10 years. And I mean, I met more than that, but these five really wanted something with me permanent. They wanted marriage, they wanted children, and I just couldn't be attracted. Is it that? Or is it something else? Tell me your experience of finding it hard to be attracted to men who want the same thing. Yeah, um, I'm I'm still kind of trying to work that out myself, but I, ne- I haven't necessarily had a lot of men coming to me that have pursuing me that have wanted those things, but perhaps they haven't even been on my radar or I've just been closed off to them. I tend to be attracted, and I feel like I'm starting to get out of this pattern a bit, but I have been attracted to artistic guys, kind of bohemian types that are creative and don't really want responsibility in their life. And my pattern has been to get involved with these types of guys and, you know, hope that time will change, will become aligned, and it just never really works out that way. So now I'm sort of trying to steer clear of those types of guys, and I'm trying to go on the dating apps and only look for men who on their profile say that they want a life partner, they want children, but for some reason, a lot of the time, I'm, I, I'm not attracted to a lot of them, but I am trying to open my mind more. I can give you some perspective on this issue of the attraction. I believe there are a number of reasons for this, and many times they are kind of jumbled together, and sometimes they have nothing to do with your situation. But I have found that these particular things are typically at play. The first is fear. And to identify whether or not this is for you, 
can be either very easy or not so easy. Easy if you were in a home with a father figure or other male who was very strong in their personality. They could be anywhere on the scale from just, you know, bombastic and loud and caused fear but were harmless, all the way to the other end of the scale of being harmful, abusive, etc. And why that is, is that men who have a strong sense of themselves and who show high level of confidence wanting a particular thing and not being your what used to be called Peter Pan boy or man who shows that he needs to be saved in a way, doesn't. So we can be drawn to those men because they can feel safer. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Along those same lines is that the less achieved, less confident, more towards, say, soft, artist soul kind of thing, they present as needing to sometimes to be emotionally saved. And if, and two rungs of this are, if you were put in the position from birth to age seven of having to be very aware of and either attending to a caregiver's needs emotionally, meaning it's flipped. In other words, no baby or child should be attending to their parents' needs emotionally, but it happens all the time. And so we can be programmed that that's the feeling of what love actually is. That caretaking, that tending to, that assuaging the battered soul, so to speak, the emotionally distraught, depressed caregiver, that that's actually the experience of love. So what happens when we meet a man who has got it all together and is ready to go forward with his adult life, there's no attraction. There's no chemistry. It's like, well, that's not what love is. That's not what love feels like. That doesn't feel like anything. So that's another. Are either of those two a part of your background? Yeah. Well, I, I'm curious what you think of my situation. I I didn't have a father that was that first category that I wasn't afraid of my father, but I had an older brother who was very angry, very like loud, angry, ab abusive, I feel. And I was terrified of him. And my parents were basically just in denial about it. And I sort of just locked myself in my room most of my childhood. Do you think, you know, ha having an older sibling with that kind of energy could, could create this? You tell me what you think in terms of your real feelings when men present to you as very strong personalities, or if you're at all triggered by certain types of behavior from men. I never really thought about it, but I think I do kind of avoid men with strong personalities, or I'm not attracted to them, maybe because, you know, I just feel like there's no room for me in that scenario. It makes sense to me based on my relationship with my older brother and the family. So perhaps with the softer artistic type, that's where I feel com more comfortable and there, an attraction can form there. That mm -hmm. kind of, that resonates with me. Okay. And while you're talking to me out of your conscious mind and you're likely as the adult you are, not consciously carrying around any of this fear, the subconscious part of you wants to keep you safe at all times. And it's that part that may very well be pushing back against the more assertive, not needing help or softer kind of guy in order to keep you safe, because that's what our subconscious is there to do. And so tell me, your brother is how much older? Four years older. So it's old enough to 
have significantly colored your young life birth to age seven. And here's what you also discovered, that your love interest that will primarily be your mother. In this case, we can put it together too, mother and father did not protect you. Okay, this was your perception of it, being a tender, young baby, child, etc. In other words, if you did not get to run to them and be soothed, your fears assuaged, no repercussion that you saw coming back on your brother, you intuited and interpreted that love itself is not protective and the world, in a sense, is not a safe place. Now, that may sound like hyperbole, but it only sounds like hyperbole to us as the adult, conscious, experientially knowledged people that we are. But to a one-year-old, a three-year-old, a five-year-old, it's not that experience. You see? Yes, that makes complete sense. So those men that present in the way that you're talking, some would say in the psychological community that you are actually giving the experience to them that you are looking for. Some would say that. Others, it would be along the lines of what we're talking about, that it's more you are feeling safer and more protected by being with men who do not have any of the energy you felt and were not protected around of your brother. Mm -hmm. And here's the rub is that, okay, while that's the case, what are you going to do about it in order to change it? Because it's been your experience since you've been an adult woman dating and wanting to be married with children that those men that you are most attracted to, whether it's wanting to save them or just because you are attracted out of fearing the other, they're not going to give you your life as you dream to have it. Strong man and children. Yeah, that makes sense. So we can kind of circle back here to looking at the most recent of your situations and then looking a little ahead to what are you going to do now that you've made this, what I'm hearing is a decision about, I've got to change this in order to get a different result, right? Yeah. So how long were you with James in a situationship? We met eight months ago, and it's been on and off until just a couple weeks ago. And what made it a situationship? Him not being willing to commit to it being a relationship is why I call it a situationship. I wanted it to be a relationship. So tell us about it a little bit. How it started, what he was like. In other words, he presented immediately that he did or did not want to be married with children, etc. Yeah. So he, we met at a bar and I actually approached him. This was before I encountered your work. So I know that that's not a good way to start. I didn't approach him hitting on him I was just he was in line by the bathroom and I was just being friendly and um, then we got to chatting and I got pretty drunk that night and we slept together which I really regret but and then kind of immediately there was a strong connection like I really I feel like we really enjoyed each other as people and immediately I the next day what are you looking for? Had that conversation, I guess, and told him that I'm looking to have children. I want to settle down. He was pretty honest with me that that's not what he's looking for right now, but he seemed to really like me. And I regret this, but I just, I kept kept in contact and kept pursuing the situation because I liked him so much and felt that there was so much potential, really believed that. And I guess, yeah, hoped for a while that that we could get on the same page. And we discussed it multiple times. And sometimes he seemed a little interested in the idea of 
um, being a father and things like that. But overall, looking back, I should have <laughs> listened to what he was telling me, that he was not open to that, really. So that was a, I don't know, I feel like I, I was pretty foolish, and I hope not to repeat that again. Thank you for telling us that. Sometimes people come into our lives to be straws, meaning the straw that breaks the camel's back, so that we truly learn from it and don't make the same mistake. I hope that's the case with him. <laughs> All right. I also want to say something here that I think is really important for women who are looking to have something permanent, marriage, children, etc. There's an old saying, and I think it was a rabbi who said this, how it starts is how it ends. And that may seem a little confusing, but what it means is that if it starts off in the wrong way, it's going to end because it's wrong. Men are on top of time, meaning they're right in the here and now with things. They are, I believe, anthropologically set up for this because they are the male animal meant to spread their seed. So back thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago when we were in the wild, we copulated in the wild like animals do. And in order for a man to spread his seed, he had to be right at the ready, grab a female, mate with her quickly because there were other animals, Neanderthals, marauders, etc., and lots of dangers. They're also hunters. So they have to be right in the here and now. They also do not have most of the time constraints related to having children that women do. So they do not have to think about it in the way that women do. Doesn't mean they shouldn't, but generally they just don't. And again, we go back to just being the male of the species. They are not set up from a little boy to be thinking about it in the way that generally girls just do. Little girls play most of the time it's to do with dolls and being a woman and life as a, yes, it can be a career Barbie, but it's also wife and mother related. And a woman dreams of her wedding day, etc. No little boy is daydreaming of his wedding day. It's just not, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like I say in my book, it's someday. Someday, yeah, I intend to have kids someday. I'll be married someday. Where anything else in their life, they have a, a goal set and a time frame for it. I'm going to get out of school in X amount of years. I'm going to do that business degree this year. And by next year, I will be here in the firm and et cetera, et cetera. I'll have my finances this way, or uh, I'm going to run a marathon. So I'm starting to do, you know, 10 miles every other day and blah, blah, blah. But when it comes to relationship, marriage, children, someday. So how we start it is very, very important because we can guide men who are in that someday category to make it now. And here's what I mean. You know now that it was not in your best interest to have gone home with him that night. Yeah. And I also want to disavow you of one thing. You said, I talked to him in the line for the restroom. Yeah. I don't want any woman to think that that action is going to be a make or break one at all. Mm. It is not the problem that you approach a man. It's what you do subsequent to that approaching. Because here's how that works. You talk to him, he finds you attractive, and he wants to continue the conversation. And after the restroom, he hunts you down, you start talking, you have a great time, and you have this chemistry, and it's very exciting for him. And you call it a night. Well, of course, he's getting your number. And then he has to pursue it, ask you on a real date. And through time and having to pursue you is how a man falls for you. Yeah. 
Then a man, if he's falling for you and it's a fantastic relationship and now he's in love and you say, I'm looking to have a real relationship and marriage and children, it could be quite a different conversation. Unfortunately, all men have in them Freud's Madonna whore dichotomy. And typically, again, there are outliers, but we want to think as women in this fashion. He does not think the woman he's going to someday marry and someday have kids with is a woman who got drunk and slept with him that first night. Right. That makes total sense. It's really unfortunate. It's sad. I wish it weren't that. I hate that it is, but I'm here to get women what they desire and deserve, and we have to go with the existing reality, not what would be preferable. Right. And can I ask you a question about that? Mm -hmm. um, with him in particular, we, you know, we slept together, we... I know like we both had a great time with each other the next day we, we got along really well and then I feel like I got into this pattern where I and now I've, I'm familiar with your work and I I wouldn't do this again but I was the one basically initiating all of our time spent together pretty much if I could go back in time if he wasn't initiating with me I should just forget him right is that is that, or is that too much to unpack right now? Um, or is it, yeah, if, if, if they're not going to ask you out, it's just over, basically. Is that a hard, kind of a hard rule? It's not a hard rule. Okay. It's a hard rule of thumb. And what I mean by it's not a hard rule is this. You did not allow for space for him to do any kind of pursuit. What I just mentioned, men fall in love through the act of pursuing. That tells you everything you need to know. You did not give him a chance to fall in love. He likes you a lot. There is a lot there, but you did not allow for him to fall in love because that is not how men fall in love. When they are handed anything, they don't consider it to be of as much value as if they worked for it. That's the three C's of men, competition, challenge, conquering. Yeah, and that makes sense. And I think I, did, I didn't allow him that space to pursue me because of the, what we spoke about in the beginning, which is self-confidence. I think I am not confident, you know, that he's going to step up and pursue me. So it's like, I feel that I, my instinct is to, to jump in myself and, and make it happen, which I, I can see now is working against me. There's no question that it does regardless. So yes, it's a very hard rule of thumb, meaning that if you're seeing a man because he has pursued it to an absolute 80% degree, and in the beginning, especially starting out as you did, it had to be an all or nothing. And you did not count on the fact that he would. You just told me we had a wonderful night that night, but you did not have what you call the confidence to know that he would be coming back to you and pursuing it to one degree or another. And here's where we get back to the origination of this. Your fundamental programming, what I'm hearing from this example, is that you are not fundamentally worthy of being loved, cared for, given attention in any way, shape, or form in your subconscious mind. And that was programmed from you not being protected as a child. So you felt unworthy, no confidence that you would be protected, not cared for. And so what do you have to do to get your needs met? If that's the case, you have to give yourself to men in a way that devalues you. It's a vicious cycle. 
Wow, yeah. Yep, that, that feels really true. And that you can change readily and quickly by first recognizing that that's all that's going on. Mm. Otherwise, your consciousness is going to tell you all manner of stories as to why it's going on. Mm. Yeah. And there is no other story other than that. Because I just outlined, if you were a woman, exactly you. I mean, the clone of you. And we take the clone of you, and she was given all the love, attention, and caring, a la protecting of what was going on in your home, and knew that she is absolutely just for being in the world, valued, lovable, loved, safe. She would know in that encounter with James that night that she is whole and would not have the need to be fed the validation of sex that night. She would know, I'm going to get it if I want it. And through that pursuit, he gets to fall. Mm. And unfortunately, in our modern society, we don't have the parameters that some traditional societies still have. In other words, if we were in, say, someplace like Algeria right now, I would say like probably 95 or 98 percent Muslim and people are not going to bars and women are not drinking and they're wearing hijabs and all of that. That keeps everything in line so that the men can feel what they need to feel. Well, yeah, that's that's not so great because that's all on the far end of that side of things. And so women don't have choice as they do here. And But the sweet spot is somewhere in the middle. And regardless of our religious leanings or moral leanings or any of it, if we know how men work psychologically and love, we have to override our needs of the moment or our programming and do what we know works and at least will give you a shot. Yeah. And you may still have a shot with him if there's some degree of interest with him. And it sounds like there is. It's not like he didn't want you or like you, but you would have to fundamentally turn things around and do what we're talking about. Now, you're trying to make up for stuff so it's not as easy as if it's done from the get-go but it's still possible it's only been two weeks he may be back to give you more information about that relationship it went on like with us um going on dates that i was mainly planning and um sleeping together for about the first two months of the relationship and then it just wasn't he we had these conversations about children and things and uh it wasn't going in a good direction I was starting to get upset and that's like another piece of my dating struggles is I can become very upset I can become very emotional I can become very reactive and and so we sort of ended things after the first two months, took a long break from talking. And then I discovered your work and I ended up trying kind of to, to reset things with him. And I reached out to him uh, maybe three months ago and just like apologized for being reactive and, you know, apologized for, like said, you know, I, sh I should have listened to what you said about not really wanting children, but... Um, I do really like, like, appreciate you as a person. Like, if you want to be, have a friendship, you know, I'd be open to that because he had mentioned that in the beginning. Maybe we should be friends because I, <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not on the same page as you having kids and, and whatnot. I was okay with it just being a friendship, but also there's a part of me that wanted to just, for us to just spend some time together without sex with, and just like getting to know each other more without the pressure of um, everything and so we we spent some time together doing that and and had a 
nice time. And then a couple weeks ago, oh, and I also had asked him if he would be my plus one to my younger brother's wedding this summer. And he said he would, which I thought was great for, great news to me. And then I asked him if he wanted to go to the opera with my younger brother and his fiance because we were going to the opera. And he said, sure. And we all went to the opera. And then afterwards, he just kind of, him and I were, we went to get a drink afterwards. And he was, you know, talking about, oh, your brother's probably going to have a family soon. And I'm like, yeah. And he just made some really negative comment. Yes, like some people just have their their lives together and just seem to know what to do. And then there are people like us. And I... And I just, that really hurt me um, because I I felt like he was just being incredibly negative towards me. And I don't know, I guess that that night kind of soured things for me. And uh, so I just told him, like, basically, I I don't, (laughs) or like, I can't, I, I can't be, or whatever. I can't keep spending time with him. I wished him the best, and he didn't respond. I'm sorry. Thank you. But if you look at this as a gift, that you were meant to learn this in a way that you will not make the same mistake again, and it brought you here, then great. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's where do you go from here? Because I'm not hearing that you are likely to get any thing in the short run from James. However, if it's something you truly desire and think that he is the one, you can work with manifesting modalities to have him come back and perhaps start afresh. That's, of course, up to you. What do you think when I say that? Um, a part of me, I guess, is <laughs> Is happy to hear that because I, I, I guess it's nice to feel like there could be some hope there. I do like him a lot, but I also feel that it could be a very hard road with him. And he doesn't really have, I don't think he's, like, in, like you talked about in other episodes and in your book, like, I don't think he's in a place to be a buyer right now because of his professional life and things like that I don't think they are where he wants them to be and like I don't know like maybe maybe my instinct maybe is like I should I should look for someone who's more in a solid place I guess to pursue what I want to pursue if that makes sense yes it makes a lot of sense right and you can do this you can work on your programming which you're going to have to do and give yourself what was missing and that is the feeling of being loved the feeling of being worthy the feeling of being valued and create the safety in your own life that will allow for you to meet more of a buyer recognize men who are that feel safe around men who are not lost who are more confident less soft or needing of the woman being the complete rower of the boat, so to speak, like you were with him. Mm-hmm. Right. We have to do this work. And my approach is three-pronged, the manifesting, the mindset, and the mechanics of men. Mm-hmm. You have to live in a state of knowing that you are getting what you want and you are having it. You concurrently need to be upping your self-worth, self-confidence, your lovability with the programming being overridden with what you want to be, not what was programmed in you to be. And your consciousness can do that. It takes focus, it takes intention, it takes work, but you can do that. And then you need to be understanding men in a way that anyone 40 or under, even older now, has been led astray with. 
that everything is the same and equal, and it's absolutely fine for us to be the one to reach out, to set dates, to be male energied, and that there are no differences between the sexes in that way. Well, the beauty is, if you want to do that, we don't live in a country where you can't. Most generally speaking, we're talking about you and me here in the United States and in many, many places. You can do exactly as you'd like to do. If it worked, women would be getting what they want, but it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> right. As I said, not fair, not great. Wish it were different. Wish women could take that role, but in heterosexual relationships with men, it will not work in their favor. Now, there are always outliers and there are always exceptions to the rule. And I've worked with some of those exceptions to the rule and we make it work. But generally speaking, you want to follow the rule because it's going to be an easier road. Mm -hmm. But in order to follow the rule, it's really important to have our self-concept in alignment with being able to do what we must do to have the man feeling what he needs to feel. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can decide about James and whether or not you want to manifest him, manifest him or someone better, but the biggest issue here is you understanding how men work in that way and then working on your own programming. And it has something to do with the lack of feeling inherently worthy to be loved, protected, safe, and feeling valued. I'm hearing that, unfortunately, whether or not your parents had good intentions, you, in your baby mind, did not get the programming that you were worthy, that you were protected, that you were safe, that you were lovable. Because safety, protection, worthiness, lovability is all under one umbrella when we are that young. There is no delineation between them. In other words, as an adult now, we can know somebody loves us, but they just don't have the capability of being a protector, say. Doesn't mean they don't love us. And we can make that delineation as an adult. Child? No, not at all. I'm no good. When I'm not saved by my love interest, meaning my parents, it's because I'm not good enough to be saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very unfortunate, but that's how we are programmed for our worth and value. It's everything is not happening to us like we are a victim of it. From zero to seven, whatever happens to us, goes right into our subconscious mind as we are the cause of it. And I believe that I'm like struggling with that on so many levels in dating. I've gone on, you know, some other dates in the last six months. And one with one guy, I'll call him Chris, he was great. He was that strong, fully formed adult man that like, I think I'm really, that's what I really need consciously. That's what I really want. And he, I don't know, like I, I, this was after I discovered your work and I, I followed a lot of your protocols and let him take the lead and he planned a date and it was really good. And he, you know, was the one texting me and he asked me on the date what I'm looking for. At the end of the day, I told him I'm looking for, you know, I want to settle down. I want to have children. He, you know, seemed very positive about that and said he wanted to see me again, and but he travels a lot for work. And he texted me a couple times after the date, and I felt very confident that I would see him again. And just, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't follow up. Like, he didn't follow up with plans. He didn't say, like, okay, I'm going to be back in two weeks or whatever. And, like, I just, my, my self-concept. Well, I'm hearing a very good thing for you to take note of. And it is a mistake that many women fall into who are in a certain age range whereby they know they, you know, want to have children. And as you said, you're feeling frustrated and scared. Right. You're going to need to 
changed that frustrated and scared to a mindset of excited and accepting. And the biggest mistake you are making with the men right from the get-go is that on the first date or very early on, you are hitting them with your need and want of having kids. Okay. And it is scaring them away. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that, but it's so funny because so many, I was going to ask you this because so many, so much dating advice nowadays and like my therapist, they're like, you need to say from the very beginning exactly what you want. Like, and yeah, I could see how that could scare them away. Like even if they might be open to it or I don't know, it's just maybe it's just too, it's too serious or something too much on the first, at the very beginning. You summed it up. It's so bad, the advice that is out there. <laughs> it couldn't hurt women more. Mm. Yeah. You've read my book. You understand the puppy principle. Yeah. You really need to reread the chapter about you going with your friend Laura to look at puppies. And you are ready to adopt. And Laura isn't. When she's down on the floor playing with all those puppies, do you think she's not having as equally a good a time as you are getting all the licks and pets and wonderfulness of those puppies? She is. But she just went along with you to look because you're ready to adopt. And then you say to her, here, I got this one for you. Here's the response good luck with that <laughs> she's not ready to adopt and you want to think about the man being in that position because men see commitment as a responsibility they love puppies they have to be ready willing and able to adopt the puppy for the lifestyle they deem is right for them and when you immediately say I'm here to be adopted right now you got to tell me if you want to adopt it's a turn off. Yeah. In other words, if in that scenario, and I give the puppy principle so that you understand it under the realm of something that you as a woman can get and understand because you've done it, is that you can be holding the cutest puppy ever. And when you're not ready to adopt, you don't just take it. It immediately makes you feel, you know, I've got to emotionally remove myself from this puppy. Now, if we take the analogy out a little bit and and we said, okay, no, Laura, I know you're not ready to adopt. Why don't you just foster it for me? Because I'm going to adopt. So you foster it for a while. Guess what happens while she fosters it without the pressure of adopting? Guess what happens? Falls in love. That could change her mind, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Maybe she wasn't ready. Maybe she wasn't thinking about doing it. But because there was no pressure and she was going to give it to you because she was fostering it for you, very different scenario. And that is akin to you start seeing the man with the knowledge that soon and early on you're going to find out, but you're going to find out in a more roundabout way. Mm. You're not going to ask him on the first or second time out. Okay. Yeah. And what if, like, for instance, that guy that I went on the date with, he, at the end of the date, he said to me, what are you looking for? What do you, what do you think I should have said in that? Okay. That's fine. You say, you know, I'm looking for something that's right. You know, I'm at a point in my life where I'd like to find the one. Mm hmm eventually have a family if it's right. Mm. You can also, before you answer, you can say, oh, I love that question. It's a little bit loaded, but I love it. How about you? Mm. And find out first what he is looking for in that way. But he's the one that proffered the question, right? Mm -hmm. But it's your anxiety about it that is causing you to mess up. And you've been given what I believe to be the absolute wrong advice. Mm -hmm. One good thing about all online dating is that typically you can see in profiles what people are interested in. Right. And you can see if a man is open to having children. That's all you need. Okay. In other words, as long as it isn't an absolute no, it's fine. Okay. 
and like on Hinge, some people will say they don't want, some men will say I don't want children. Some men just won't answer that question. Do you think if they don't answer that question, you should just, you should keep them in the realm of possibility or you should just weed them out as a no? That's a good question. What you need to do in that instance is first and foremost, get my One Love self-help course. It's so affordable and it immediately tells you how you guide the man to get that question answered. And here's my thought on it, just to help you in the moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 80-20 Wonder Club yet, you need to be because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive, a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 8020 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of seasons one, two, and three in a categorized list by age and relationship status, and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, Relationship Evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. When you see that that question hasn't been answered, you don't do it in text back and forth before you have the phone call or even the first meeting. If you know anything about my course, you are guided on how to, in a feminine way, not asking him out, but you guide him to a first phone call because you never go and meet anybody from online through just texting. It shows him, I don't value myself. I don't value my time. I will actually go and meet a man who is not deigned to have the the good grace and cojones to call me and introduce himself so that we actually share a conversation and hear each other's voices to see if I want to do that. You guide him to that in a very feminine way. It is then so that you don't waste your time because online is about one thing first and foremost. You don't waste your valuable time as a woman because as a woman, there's nothing more valuable than your time. And we know that because you're 39 and you're heading into your 40s and you want to have children, there is nothing more valuable than your time right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's during that phone call. You say, so Steve, I was re-looking at your profile in anticipation of this call and you left it blank about what it is that you're looking for. What are you looking for? Because then you have not spent any emotional bandwidth and you've not spent any of your valuable time getting ready and going on some first meeting with him. Yeah, I love that. And it's much easier for a man to be telling you in a phone conversation rather than asking him when you're just initially going back and forth in text. Yeah, that makes sense. And you hear in some man's voice the nuance that you're not going to get in anything cyber. You're just not. And it's very easy for that man to say, I don't know, or no, or put it back on you, or you just get into a whole host of the texting. It just doesn't work. We are animals that need communication nuance and we take an enormous amount of our knowledge and perception through voice, talking, interacting, visual, smell, in person. 70% of communication is nonverbal. Was well, it any wonder where, you know, online goes awry when people are trying to set things up via texting and a woman wastes her time going back and forth with some uh, guy from online with just 
just a picture. He's never called. You've heard nothing in terms of getting voice information and that input. I have clients tell me all the time, it's amazing what you can get from that first phone call. And I tell you just how to get off of it and whether or not you're going to go for that meeting. And if you do, how you guide it, because prior to a first meeting, you have the most control as the woman and you can guide it. It's what you do after you've met that then starts the ball rolling on the man pursuing. Just as in that meeting with James, if you had gone up to him, approached him even, said what you said and started the ball rolling and you had a wonderful night, it's what you do from there and allowing him from there to take the reins. Same thing in online dating. There's a lot to it whereby you can really help yourself get many more matches that are right, that are not going to waste your time, at least be somewhat viable. And it's my personal opinion. It's not a numbers game. You as a woman don't want to be going through a lot of numbers. It's better to have one great possibility a month than 20 dates just to feel you're doing something and you're out there and putting yourself out there with guys that are not going to amount to a hill of beans. Mm, okay, that's great to know. I was going to ask you that too, because a lot of the dating advice is like, you need to be out there constantly. And that just sounds exhausting to me. And, and I feel like it's, it's hard to date in my feminine energy if I'm constantly on this, just constantly on this merry-go-round of meeting a new guy, you know, two guys a week or something like that. So I love that advice of um, filtering more and then just getting a better possibility and less, less time, w- wasting less time. Yes. And it's what I teach in the course. And it's so valuable because you don't want to get burnt out online. You want to be there because it's where men go and do their hunting now. And I'm not surprised that you met James, 40 years old, in a bar. You say he's not in any place thinking about anything for the future. Yeah doesn't mean you can't meet great guys at a bar. Great guys who have goals and who are looking to move their life forward, go to bars. But it's still a crapshoot in that way. And you don't know anything about him because if you had met James online, he likely would have put, or you would know from the way I guide you to find it out before you ever even meet. Yeah. So you have a lot to chew on with this episode, meaning you need to listen back. You've got to start to do the self-concept work. Manifesting will help you in keeping your outlook positive, but you've got to be feeding your subconscious mind through sleep meditations, daily affirmations, writing, and really overriding the programming you have had that has either made you fear strong men, which there's a component of that, and also not trusting that any love interest will allow you to feel safe, loved, cared for. And there's there's just a lot more that you're going to need to be working on. And if you're with a therapist who's not doing it in this way, you need to find someone who will. And if it's not me, then, you know, you need to find someone else that will be allowing you to do this kind of work that intuitively, you know, works with men. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. This is, yeah, this is very clarifying. I'm glad because you deserve it. You can have this. You do have time. You can make this happen. You've got to know that. You have to know for certain. You have to turn the the fear into excitement. Mm Mm-hmm and just decide to take steps that are actually uh, more proactive in reaching a goal. There's nothing as important really for anybody. Nothing is going to affect your life more than whether you marry or not, and then who you marry, and then if you have children. Those three things are more significant than what you're going to do for a living Mm. in terms of affecting your life positively or negatively. Because 
because whatever you choose to do for a living, you are largely in control of that and can guide that. And if you do things kind of by the book, go to school, you get the degree, you start small and you work your way up, or even if you're in something that isn't a more of a straight line trajectory, meaning you're a musician or an actor or something, you hone your craft, you keep going, you keep plugging away, you have your goal, you reach milestones, you see whether you're getting somewhere or not, and you have control over it. But because there is more limitation because other people are involved, like a man and children, you've got to be very proactive about that as a woman because you're time limited. Because no matter what you do for your career, unless you're a gymnast or athlete, you're going to be able to do that no matter how old you are. Right. But this, being a wife and mother, you only have a certain amount of time. Yeah, it's become very real to me. Um, yeah, this, this has to be like top priority right now. I'm glad to hear that because a lot of women do not make it a top priority. They have been fed the Hollywood lie and believe it. Right. That at 45, you're going to meet your soulmate who's going to marry you and pay for all kinds of in vitro or whatever and right. mm -hmm, or get a surrogate or what, you know, I mean, all the stuff that's out there. That's possible, but I like to go with more probability and it's not popular, but it's practical. Yeah. So sure. I thank you for doing this today. I hope this was helpful to you and I think it will be helpful for many women to hear. This has been so great. I feel like you've um, just given me such a, I don't know, just a, a clear path and I'm sure I have other questions, but I think this is enough for now. Thank you so much, Coach Paul. You're so welcome. I'm so glad you did it. Make sure to get the One Love Self-Help course. It's extremely affordable. So get it now because it's all in there. And with the One Love Self-Help course, you get a full coaching experience with me. We can follow up and help you hone in even more on the little tweaks that make such a difference. And I'll leave you with this. It's like right now, think of your dating as two parents parallel lines because you haven't gotten what it is that you want. And two parallel lines. All you need to do is move the one line just a hair to the left or right. Just a hair. And what's going to happen? Eventually, those two lines are going to cross just because you've moved it just a hair. The smallest little tweak can mean so much. Mm, I love that. Yep. And that's what you're doing. You're taking positive action to change the things that are in your control to change, knowing what you know, when you're given more information and you know the information here is right. The truth in me is speaking to the truth in you. You have it. Mm-hmm. So now it's just executing it. And that's what I mean about just moving that line a little to the left or right. And you're going to find the two parallel lines cross. And that will be your sweet spot of finding the one and getting all that you desire, all that you deserve. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You are so welcome. It was great to talk to you today. And I trust that we will be talking again. Yes. Whether your desire is marriage or children or just being partnered, purposeful dating is very different than the status quo of thinking, it'll happen when it happens, it'll happen when you least expect it, or my favorite, it'll happen when you stop trying, or it'll happen when you stop looking. While I understand the idea of let go and let God, equally true is fortune favors the bold. Nothing else comes in life by doing nothing. Why would we think that meeting our life mate? The most important thing that affects our lives more than anything else, all things being equal, just like Jolie and I discussed. So we have to think, feel, and act our way to what we want. Think strategically, feel positively, and act accordingly. For any woman knowing she wants a child of her own, purposeful dating is an absolute must. It means prioritizing meeting appropriate men, 
It means prioritizing a man's qualities, desires, and actions over initial attraction. It means prioritizing dating over other things many times. This is the hardest one for any modern woman, I believe, to get past because we have been told achieve, 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 prioritize your goals, and then we think of those goals as being some kind of achievement aligned with work, education, etc. Finding a life partner and having children with that person has to be as big a goal in your mind and the time spent towards it must be there as well. But somehow our society frowns upon that 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 isn't as worthy of a goal in some way. And that's very sad to me. And lastly, it means having a dating portfolio, as I call it, a portfolio of diversified actions, which necessitates a combination of organic and online dating to maximize your opportunities. For example, networking functions, in the area of your work, new hobbies that men are attracted to. For example, studies reveal that men go to financial seminars, home buying seminars, business seminars, and that means that they are a great place to meet men. Think about it. A man who goes to a financial seminar He has goals. He's going to a home buying seminar. Maybe he wants to buy his own home or he's in real estate, etc. Speed dating in your city. Online dating. One Love has a speed dating hack in it that I give as a bonus. And One Love, online to never ending love, seven simple steps to digital dating success is a way of approaching online dating that maximizes your efforts. I received a lovely email the other day, and I will share a couple of sentences from it that are appropriate here. She writes, the journey with my new man started online, and I'm writing to you today to share the exciting news of my engagement. The whole process was so beautiful, natural, and stress-free because of my belief in your program and how it gave me belief in the possibilities and in myself. It sums it up so beautifully. Having a course like One Love that you can get started on right away at your own pace, and then when you have a question, talk to me directly, is very helpful, I believe, because it puts you in the mode of intention and purposeful dating. It makes you prioritize it. Those who pay, pay attention. And while One Love is exceedingly affordable and an amazing value that I'm giving you because it is a self-help course, it still puts you in the mindset of doing things differently to get a different result, and it works. So I hope you will get that, get stoked, and get going. And in the meantime, don't forget to make him wonder. I trust you got a lot of great information and gained valuable insight from this real coaching conversation that you can use to help you in your romantic life. It's why this podcast exists and why there are several episodes that I choose to bring to you in their entirety like this one. But you may not know that 98% of Make Him Wonder episodes are only partially available on YouTube and podcast listening platforms. And because I don't want you to miss out on getting the results you desire, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, an exclusive membership-only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you get each episode in its entirety ad-free. 
over 150 episodes with a real woman coming to me with a real life love situation like you just heard, all categorized by age and relationship status. So you can choose episodes that pertain to your unique situation, categories of 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, getting an ex back, situationships, dating divorced, older women, younger men, and so much more. Plus, all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. No waiting for partial episodes to drop here on YouTube or your podcast listening platform. The 8020 Wonder Club also includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace each and every week. Join the club monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a six or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me personally. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you want with the man you want. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have the results you desire and deserve. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. That's T H E. 8020 wonder.club you and your love will be glad you did